I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Ghostland. I'm Linda Quinlan. <clears throat> Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. Today is Tuesday, August 6th. And uh, we are taping at Orca Media, which is um, on unceded indigenous land. So thank you, everybody. And Ann, what do you have for us? I have many stories. The first half of my presentation will involve stories from around the world, and then the second half will be all about the Olympics, so get ready. Um, let's start in Latin America, where there's some discouraging news. <clears throat> Rebel groups in <coughs> Colombia are killing trans women in a social cleansing campaign. 41 trans women were murdered by armed groups in 2023. In Colombia, armed groups are targeting transgender women along with other so-called undesirables in a violent campaign of social cleansing across the country. Paramilitaries in Colombia still operating despite a peace agreement with the country's largest rebel group, the FARC, in 2016, killed more than 40 transgender women last year. Oh. Eight more died between February and April of this year, activists say in an effort by armed groups to create a parallel state where trans women and others seen as damaging to society are punished or killed. <clears throat> Wasn't there a lesbian who was mayor of the capital of Colombia at one point, I thought? I... Okay. I have to check on that. I'll check. Um, in a sparsely populated department in southern Colombia in a rebel stronghold, flyers began appearing on the streets and circulating through WhatsApp warning of social cleansing. Of, there's a, an expression in this report. It's F-A, and they have three asterisks, T's, which means lesbian and men and women who destroy homes. All of them would be considered legitimate military targets. One was Tatiana Caspedides, 51, <clears throat> a trans hairdresser who was working in her home salon when three armed men burst in and warned her she had a week to leave town or she would, she would be killed. After hiding for several days, she packed a small bag and fled with her dog in the night. She said she lived through similar periods of rebel, rebel conflict and endured sexual violence that, that accompanies it. Another trans woman uh, said she and other trans women in Colombia are limited in their ability to make a living because of discrimination and forced into sex work because of lack of opportunities. <clears throat> when I started my transition, I used to work at night. At that time, we would receive flyers announcing social cleansing of drug addicts, prostitutes, and this word, F-A, blank, 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 T-S. If Is I it may it Bingo. Oh, I, say, I wish I, I'd just say you, it. Exactly. You know. Okay, <clears throat> faggots then. I, and Luckily, also, I just found that Bogota, Colombia. Bogota. Cap, for, Bogota elects the first woman and lesbian mayor. When? 2019. Is she still standing? Bogota. Uh, you know, I've got a Bogota story coming up. Bogota. <clears throat> um, so hold on to that thought, as Keith would say. Um, Claudia Lopez, anyway. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, at that time, we would receive flyers and ounce of faggots. Luckily, nothing happened to me, but a friend of mine was killed, she said. The 2016 peace agreement between the FARC and the Colombian government was supposed to end decades of conflict and included a formal recognition of LGBTQ people who were victims of the conflict, along with a guarantee of political participation. That promise has fallen away with the armed group's resurgence and renewed threats to the LGBTQ community. But speaking of Bogota, we have an interesting sort of... We were there. Well, no, we weren't. We were in we Cartagena. Yeah, Cartagena. Right. Um, but now let's, uh, let, let's look at a picture of a gay couple that was chased out of a park for kissing, and um, the community has rallied with a kiss-a-thon. So here are the two men, Santiago Maldonado and Jorge Esteban, kissing uh, on Sunday in Bogota. Maybe the mayor is still mayor. Um, yeah. Hundreds of supporters rallied for this gay couple threatened by a mob for kissing in public by kissing in public. The public 
Basaton or Kissathon was organized on social media in response to this shocking viral video showing the couple. Um, I'm sorry, I left his name off the picture. His name is Jorge Esteban Farias. They were run out of the park in Colombia's capital city by an angry neighborhood mom, one frenzied woman wielding a broom handle. If you don't leave, we'll lynch you, one woman screams in the video. In this neighborhood, we don't allow sex in the park, yells another, especially not in front of children. Over the shouting, the young men ask, what sex? We're, we're, we're only kissing. Uh, after they were chased from the park, they reported the confrontation to authorities. The um, official in charge of sexual diversity in Bogota said the case was being investigated. Um, Bogota's mayor, but it doesn't say her name, uh, condemned the incident. Claudia Lopez, at least that's who it was then. I know, she's not named in this story, so I don't know if she's still mayor. And we'll have to consider that for next time. Um, Sunday's demonstration isn't the first kiss-a-thon kiss to overtake the Colombian capital. In 2019, crowds of same-sex couples staged an event outside of an upscale shopping mall where a man reportedly pushed a gay couple and screamed profanities, profanities when the two were spotted hugging and holding hands. When the couple reported the incident, uh, they, were fine, they were fined for indecent exposure. Uh, for Sunday's kiss-a-thon, which took place at the same park the couple was mobbed in, organizers used the viral video to promote the event, posting action information over the eye-popping sound and images. Turnout was huge. Supporters kissed, danced, and played music while rainbow flags filled the park. Signs read, kisses are signs of affection, not a crime. And we want to be able to kiss without being monitored. One video, video shows how the frenzied woman wielding a broom handle became a witchy rallying cry as protesters chant, bring out your broomsticks, we're not afraid. Colombia is one of the most liberal countries in Latin America when it comes to LGBTQ rights. Same-sex marriage was legalized in 2016, and same-sex parents have equal rights to adoption. Anti-LGBTQ discrimination is prohibited by law. So, that's a good, I love stories of resilience and response. Exactly. Um, now let's review some ancient history of Malaysia. Uh, last July, as I reported, uh, in 2023, the band 1975 um, visited a Malaysian music festival and shut it down after the group's foreman kissed a male bandmate on stage and criticized the country's anti-LGBTQ laws. Um, Future Sounds Asia, which is the organizer of the festival, is now suing the 1975 and its individual members for 1.9 million pounds, which is $3.76 million, according to the UK High Court documents. Uh, the, they halted the three-day Good Vibes Festival after videos widely shared on social media showed the bands Maddie Healy kissing bassist Ross McDonald. Remember this whole thing? Oh. Uh, documents lodged with the court <coughs> that the 1975 were aware of prohibitions on certain behavior while performing, especially since they had performed in the festival in 2016, and this was verified at the time. They had reportedly agreed, remember this, agreed to buy, abide by the, dis, the um, restrictions and were paid $534,960 um, $534, to perform. Um, Healy broke the conditions of performing at the festival, including, including drinking on stage, using profane language, uh, making provocative speech and taking part in a long, pretend, passionate embrace, embrace with his bandmate. And Healy is straight, and so is the bandmate. At the festival, Healy told the crowd in, Ko in Koala that Koala Lumpur had made a mistake, that they had made a mistake to by agreeing to play in Kuala Lumpur. Um, when we were looking for shows, I wasn't looking into it. This is, he, I don't see the fucking point of inviting 
19, the 1975 to a country and then telling us who, can we, we, who we can have sex with. He cut the set short, saying, all right, we got to go. We just got banned from Kuala Lumpur. I'll see you later. Now, <laughs> remember the story about Bali, <laughs> which is part of Malaysia, and they threw the lesbians out thinking uh, who were advertising it as a lesbian resort. Homosexuality is a crime in Malaysia, punishable by up to 20 years in prison and corporal punishment. And human rights groups have warned against, have warned intolerance of sexuality and gender diverse people is growing. Many LGBTQ Malaysians said Healy's stunt had done more harm than good. Following the incident, 1975 canceled subsequent shows in Taiwan and Indonesia. Uh, prior to launching legal action in the UK, Future Second Asia sent a letter demanding $4.1 million um, in compensation over the alleged breach of contract. <coughs> Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has said LGBTQ people should not be harassed, but ruled out improving rights protections for the marginalized community. And this is sort of an interesting sideline about him. Mr. Ibrahim was himself jailed twice under Malaysia's anti-sodomy legislation, in which critics argue were politically motivated prosecutions. So that's an interesting little thing. <laughs> he was granted a royal pardon in 2018 and has been prime minister since 2022. Last year, the switch watchmaker Swatch sued the Malaysian government after authorities seized rainbow-colored LGBTQ pride themes watches from its local stores in a series of raids. The country's interior ministry warned that anybody wearing or selling the watches could be sentenced to three year in pr years in prison or fined $600, $650. On to Keith, Linda says. Yes. <laughs> she was subtle this week. Uh -huh. <laughs> really okay, dumb. so first, a follow-up to our last show. The answer is the U.S. Dressage <coughs> Federation Hall of Fame is, of course, in Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> but they also acknowledge there's lots of equestrian museums and Hall of Fame. So, But he was specifically dressage, much to some people's dismay. <laughs> so for this week's trivia, it's a quote. The place in which I'll fit won't exist until I make it. Who said that? And what makes it this week's trivia question? And that's the giveaway. So events, Rainbow Umbrella, women's discussion, book discussion groups, yep. go onto the Facebook page, yep. come join you. And as I mentioned last time, we, were, we read Hijab Butch Blues, right. and let me take this opportunity to plug an upcoming interview with that author, Lamia H. I know, Very that's good. great. Another plug out, Queer Arts Festival is happening August 17th at the Plainfield Rec Field. Unless it rains again. <coughs> the Plainfield Rec Field, to, to the credit of the town of Plainfield, they've got, gone above and beyond to make sure that it's going to be a suitable venue. So everything's okay. looking good. Let me just say, uh, plug Keith's interview with two of the organizers of that, and also the interview I did. It was such a joyful interview. Weren't they good? Art is joy, queer joy. I mean, yeah. it was really a refreshing show. So uh, tune in, it was last week. I was gonna say, it was a change. It was uh -huh. Queer Reads, this is on Saturday, August 31st, 11 to noon, Fletcher Free Library. This is the last book discussion, and they're reading Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika. Aoki, and you said that it was not a familiar book, so no. we may have to go find it. <laughs> Pride Center, a couple of things. Remember, their health and wellness survey only takes 15 minutes. We'll put the link up, but you can go to their website to look for it. Also, they're about to start their second in their anti-violence program series, and this one will be about <coughs> sexual violence, and it will be from August 12th through September 23rd. They're on Zoom, <clears throat> they're facilitated, they want to ensure that this truly is a safe space. And you were correct, it is Eva Westheimer, who is the new anti-violence director at the Pride Center, 
who had worked at, out in the open in Brattleboro. Except I was wrong when I identified her as being formally affiliated with Out in the 802. So you're right, out, thank you for correcting me. Out in the open. Yeah, <laughs> too many outs in the 802. Too uh, many outs. <laughs> Not, no, there's not enough Never outs. Enough. <laughs> Fox Market, okay, they are open in East Montpelier. Foxy Market, which was their new barrier location, did get hit by the flooding. And they're still oh. mucking out the basement and cleaning out, but they're hoping that that's going to be up. But in the interim, karaoke night returns <laughs> Saturday, August 24th, 7 to 10 p.m., Come out for a soft launch of your musical career with your friends, family, and foxes. They're looking for suggestions for 80 ballads that require no vocal skills. <laughs> that would be us. And they said they're lucky enough to have two queer poetry events this week. Their original um, open <clears throat> mic is on Friday, August 16th from 7 to 9 p.m. Then on Friday, August 30th, from 7 to 9 p.m., they will have poet Liv Manonin. Is that familiar to either of you? No. As well as a few other select poets for an evening of poetry focused on queerness and disability. Mm. And also beauty, love, magic, and community. Yeah. Final plug. Tuesday, August 13th, it is the statewide primary here in Vermont. We have out candidates who are running. Some of them are running in contested election. Your vote is your voice. We cannot afford to stay home. This year, elections are going to be critical for our survival. Yes. So I will get off my soapbox and <laughs> pass it on to Linda. And you're wearing the T-shirt to prove I... it. <clears throat> well, Democratic presidential candidate, candidate Vice President Kamala Harris has chosen Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. Now, I don't know if they pronounce it like Walz, but... I think so. Yeah. As That's her it. vice president, presidential running mate. I am proud to announce that I've asked Governor Tim Walz to be my running mate, Harris said in a statement. One of the things that stood out to me about Tim is how his convictions on fighting for middle-class families run deep. It's personal. As a governor, a coach, a teacher, and a veteran, he's delivered for working-class families like his own. We are going to build a great partnership. Governor Walz and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan established <clears throat> ironclad reproductive rights and freedoms, protections for trans individuals, and gender-affirming care as fundamental rights in Minnesota. Governor Walz also banned the cruel, outdated practice of conversion therapy. Um, and ended book bans based on ideology. And he also sponsored the first gay-straight alliance in the school in which he taught. So I think that is a very good pick. And he's also the, the person who, who first started calling Trump weird. Oh, and I didn't know yes, that. Yes, and it really caught on. <laughs> and uh, if he wins, then the lieutenant governor will be the first woman lieutenant, first woman governor of Minnesota. All right. Hey, can't beat that, right? Let's no. make history all over. I know it. Um, and this morning, on, um, I, we saw Keith Ellis, who was prosecuted, the George Floyd. Mm -hmm. you know, he appointed him prosecution prosecutor because the state prosecutor was doing such a terrible job. So I'm sorry to interrupt, Linda. That's okay. Good information to have. Exactly. Columbia, Missouri, a transgender woman, its use of the women's locker room in suburban St. Louis gym promoted a protest, a plan for a boycott, and calls for an investigation by the state's politically vulnerable Republican Attorney General, who quickly obliged. The woman joined the gym Sunday. 
The St. Louis Post-Dispatch reported by Friday morning, a Republican state lawmaker <coughs> had held a news conference outside the gym and protesters gathered to criticize the fitness center. According to the newspaper, Ellisville Police Captain Andy Vong of Vang, I don't know, and he said the grocery, the agency on Friday received a report of alleged incident exposure at the gym that is being investigated. No charges have been filed. Also on Friday, Attorney General Andrew Bailey announced he is investigating the gym and sent a letter warning like, lifetime that its policies are enabling potentially criminal behavior. As Attorney General, I will vigorously defend and enforce Ms. Missouri's laws. You face both potential criminal and civil liabilities. So, there you go. And then there's this controversy, and I'm sure many of you have heard about this, and it's the, uh, from the uh, LGBT plus media advocacy organization, GLAD. Uh, and they have been accused by a New York Times report of spending lavish amounts of salary, first-class travel, luxury hotels, expensive chauffeured car services, and a $20,000 home office of its chief executive, Sarah Kate Ellis. The publication alleged that the spending may have violated IRS rules and the organization's own policies, <clears throat> which ask employees to try to keep costs to a minimum. GLAD, which has about 60 employees and an annual budget of about 30 million, has called the report grossly misleading and said that it is extremely audited economic reports reflect the integrity <coughs> and transparency of the organization's financial dealings in compliance with IRS rules and the international spending policies. Glad also said the article's writer, Emily Steele, had previously signed an open letter criticizing Glad for repeatedly speaking out against the Times problematic coverage of transgender people. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Okay, but this is the Glad that's the watchdog for how we're presented in the media versus Glad that is the legal organization right. in Boston. Okay. Right. I signed that letter of protest yeah. against treat coverage of trans people in the Times. Okay. Um, Glad Dad Jose Rolon, a widower raising three kids as his own, face, faces a choice. The social media influencer who covers gay family life and is known as New NYC Gay Dad was under attack by conservative online. Uh, provocateur Stu Peters. Peters, in an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory who regularly promotes anti-LGBTQ+, and white supremacist beliefs, according to the Anti-Defamation League, a watchdog organization for hateful extremists. Some pervert homo has access to at least four kids around the clock all the time. He can take them to drag conventions and then post the evidence, post pictures and videos <coughs> of criminal sexual conduct <coughs> and somehow not end up in jail or better yet, the gallows. Mm. <coughs> Peter stated, I had two choices on how to handle this. Roland posted at the time, ignore it or expose him for what he is to show the public the real people out there exist. Roland exposed him, sharing video of Peter's vile accusations, even as those same clips led to violent threats against his family. Hmm. <clears throat> now, you can't make this stuff up. So I'm just letting you know. Why do I feel like I should crawl under the table? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fellas. Is a gay he, fellow fellas? This is, is it a is it gay to vote for a woman? Fox News host Jesse Waters oh, for certainly sake. seems to believe it is. In fact, 
He's gone so far as to say men who vote for women turn into women themselves. <laughs> hmm. The pundit was making fun of a record-breaking White Dudes for Harris fundraising called on Tuesday's episode of The Five when he questioned why any man would vote for a Democrat, <coughs> claiming that it would have to be because <coughs> of mommy issues. Oh, it's is not so the party of virtue, security. It's not the party of strength. It's definitely not the party of family. And to be a man and then vote for a woman just because she's a woman is either childish, that person has mommy issues, or they are just trying to be accepted by other women, <coughs> Walter said. I heard the scientist say the other day that when a man votes for a woman, he actually transitions into a woman. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I really, if you were going to write this in fiction, it would be like, no, that's not bad. And what is white dudes for Harris? Jay organi uh, organizer Ross Morales Rockito says he believes Democrats need to actively reach out to white male voters because Republicans have not been shy about doing so. The left has been seeding white men to mega right from the way, and that's not the way to go, he said. In a live stream, Trump won over 60% of white men in both 2016 and 2020. <coughs> That's going to stop tonight because we know that the silent majority of white men aren't actually mega supporters. They are folks like you who just want to have a better life for their families. And I guess we'll get to, we'll do the movie in the second clip, I guess, but um, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngin, Youngkin, a Republican known for his anti-trans school policies, has appointed Meg Bryce, daughter of the late U.S. Supreme Court Justice Anthony Scalia, oh. to the Virginia Board of Education. Bryce, an educator in psychology who crit critics argue aligns with the mindset of Moms for Liberty, is now the eighth member Youngston, Youngkin has appointed to the nine-member board. Moms for Liberty is a group, as we know, that supports book bans and it's hostile towards LGBTQ <coughs> plus youth, has been designated as an anti-government extreme group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. So, there you go. And Well, let's go to Ghana, <laughs> where there's bad news. The Supreme Court on Wednesday upheld a six-decade-old law criminalizing gay sex as the West African country awaits another court decision on whether to introduce even harsher penalties in a new bill. The seven-member panel dismissed a lawsuit challenging the law, the presiding justice saying the reasons for the decision will be given later. The Ghanaian Criminal Court of 1960 prohibit same-sex sexual acts, calling them unnatural carnal knowledge. Offenders face up to three years in jail. The sentence will be lengthened if the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill, uh, passed in February, takes effect, and the government would intensify a crackdown on those accused of promoting lesbian, gay, or other minority sexual or gender identities. So, um, but I th seem to recall that when Kamala Harris had some contact with the Prime Minister of Ghana and urged him not to sign this law. Another reason to support her, perhaps. <laughs> Let's go to Greece, where we can talk about the summer with Carmen. <laughs> While having a day-long swim at Athens Queer Beach, best friends Demos and Nikitas recall the events of a recent summer and the prospect of returning them of turning them into a screenplay uh, for Nikita's feature debut. Imagining their lives as a film will bring the two face to face with the pending conflicts in their colorful friendship. And I have to clarify that Carmen is a dog. And I looked at the, <laughs> every time there's an animal in a film, I become anxious that something's gonna happen to it. But I think Carmen is the center and because 
reviewers have said, oh, it's adorable and so forth. So I don't think anything happens to Carmen. Um, <laughs> and let's take a look at The Summer with Carmen. <laughs> Τι φταίει και δεν περνάμε πια καλά. Το σεξουαλικό δεν είναι η αιτία του προβλήματο. Θε να το λήξουμε, Αφού με εσά δεν είχε λήξει η ιστορία. Για τον πάνω δεν είχε λήξει, για μένα. Μπορεί. Όχι, μπορεί. Ο πάνω είναι. Καλό παιδί, φαίνεται. Κάρμε! Για σέξο! Μεθαύριο φεύγει. Θα την πω στο νεξό να εισχάσει και αυτή και εγώ. Τα σκυλιά είναι ευθύνη. Φύγε στα φτιστή μαζί τη. Ήσουν φάση μη του. Εντάξει, δεν είχα καταλάβει πόσο μεγάλη ευθύνη ήταν. Έκανε παραμβολέ στο μητρικό μου ένστικτο. Το μόνο που είχε ανάγκη ήταν να βρει τον επόμενο γκόμεν. Δεν μη πιέζει. Ουελά. Αν την ήθελε πραγματικά, θα την είχε κρατήσει. Συγγνώμη από αυτό που μου τυχαίνουν καλέ περιπτώσει. Όση αγάπη και να σου δώσω εγώ για σένα, η γκόμενη θα είναι πάντα προτεραιότητα. Ποια μόνο δεν έχει νιώσει ντροπή για το παιδί τη. Σωστά. Maybe Carmen facilitates their relationship. <laughs> Bolts from one ends up with the other and it's what brings them together. <laughs> well, I did see in the trailer, as we just saw, there's a picture of their mo somebody's mother with Carmen. So... I don't know. Anyway, you can see this at Apple TV, Fandango at Home, YouTube, Google Play Movies, and TV. So that should be fun. Yeah. Um, now let's go to the Olympics, and Keith will chime in as necessary, because we both gathered some information about it. Um, now a record of 195 out LGBTQ athletes are at the Paris Summer Olympics. Um, and last time, you recall, Keith mentioned 144. Um, in the last 12 days, we've gotten submissions from 51 more people, and uh, somehow that... <laughs> in any case, let me show you a picture to start this off of Marianna Whittle, who's on the left, and Anneli Molly of Australia, who are two visible LGBTQ athletes. Uh, in basketball. Um, the number of out LGBTQ Olympians at the Summer Games in, games in Paris is a record beating Tokyo. Um, women are dominating the list. 195 out LGBTQ of course uh, athletes. Um, this includes more men than ever, even though mostly women. Outsports has revised the tally from the original 144 that Keith reported last time. Um, 50, verify 50 more out athletes have updated the list. The number is expected to grow still. Uh, it surpasses the 186 out athletes at the Tokyo Summer Olympics in 2021. It's nearly fourfold increase from the 53 in Rio in 2016 and eightfold from London in 2012, the list is dominated by women, about nine to one ratio, which is similar to Tokyo. How it, however, it does include 20 out gay and bi men, which is a record. On this list are the first out male U.S. men's track and field athlete, Nico Young, and the first out male judoka, Tim Carvelius from Germany. And a judoka is someone who competes in judo, I learned. Um, this record number reflects the increasing visibility and acceptance of LGBTQ athletes. However, this is primarily a phenomenon in countries of North America and South America, Western Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. So far, 27 nations are represented with Team LGBTQ in Paris, and a total of 206 teams, a figure that includes the competing refugee Olympic team, and I'm so interested in this, and I'd like, I hope I have time to tell you more about it. If, if, if I'll inject really quickly that you mentioned the refugee team, if we had an LGBTQ true team entering as a nation, we would be ninth in the medal standing, having already won, and we still have basketball to go, 
24 medals total, five gold, 11 silver, eight bronze. Women dominate <laughs> women's soccer. Yes. <laughs> that, that's where I think it was like over 38 out athletes, women's soccer alone. Yeah. <laughs> well, Not surprising. There are only three out athletes from Asia, two boxers from the Philippines and one from Thailand. There are only four athletes from Africa, uh, three South Africans and one from the refugee Olympic team, boxer Cindy Naramka, and I have a little story about her if we have time, born in Cameroon and now living in Great Britain. There's only one athlete from any Muslim-dominated country, a Turkish volleyball player, places where being out and gay is often illegal or dangerous. The U.S. Uh, a team has the most out Olympians, 33, but only one man. Brazil has the second with 30. Other countries with notable numbers of publicly out athletes are Australia, 22, Germany, 13, Spain, 13, Great Britain, 11, Canada, 11, the Netherlands, 10, host nation France, 9, and New Zealand, 7. <laughs> Among the prominent out Olympians are British driver Tom Daly, whom we've heard about, track stars, uh, track star Sha Kerry Richardson, who might be the world's fastest woman, pro basketball players, including Brittany Griner um, of Team USA, and trans non-binary athletes like Quinn, who plays uh, soccer for Canada, and Nikki Hiltz, who is U.S. track and field. So, an interesting development. Um, now I'd like to show you a picture of Imani Kalef, 25, who is the Algerian Olympic boxer at the center of the gender dispute. She calls for an end to bullying. What happened with her is this, um, the, um, she competed in a boxing match in Russia and beat the head Russian boxer. So Russia um, didn't like that, so they caused this controversy and began to accuse her of being, accuse, identify her as being transgender to disqualify her. So this story has legs, even though she's not transgender, she's cisgender, um, and she pleaded with the public to avoid bullying all athletes because she's had a terrible intense time, terribly intense time. Um, transphobes have piled on, including um, Donald Trump, Elon Musk, E.J. E. J. Rowling, um, etc. She previously called her 2023 20, disqualification a conspiracy and has recently denounced the allegations about her gender again, telling reporters Saturday, I want to tell the entire world that I'm a female. Um, the association's decision to decoy, this is the Russian Association, yep. the International Boxing Association, uh, the president is reportedly a close ally of Putin. Um, it, um, they disqualified her. Uh, it, it broke her winning streak. Last year, the IOC stopped recognizing this organization uh, after finding years of financial and ethical impropriety. USA Boxing also cut ties with it last year, call, calling attention to ongoing failures. After her first win last week, uh, Frequent critics of transgender rights, <clears throat> I said, uh, J.K. Rowling, I don't know what I, whether I said E.J. or something, Elon Musk, et cetera, um, said a lot of terrible things. Um, Marco Rubio jumped in and Georgia Maloney from Italy. I will keep men out of women's sports, Trump wrote on his social media site. Uh, others have come to the pair's defense because there's another uh, person who was also mixed up in this. Um, Nikki Hiltz, a non-binary American runner participating in this Olympics, attributed the criticism to transphobia. No okay, kidding. Okay, yeah, and we've got to move on now. Oh, Linda, are you serious? Yes. This is only, we're running out of time. Keith. Maybe you can come uh, back to me. I, okay. I'll try to be fast here. <laughs> This story is coming out of Maine, and it has a personal connection with me. Oh. And the personal connection is I'm going to be talking about a school in Lincoln County. 
And this school 35 years ago was where my godchild came out as a gay male to his entire school as the result of an incident of bullying against oh. another student. <coughs> and right. that started a chain eh? reaction that they established their first gay straight alliance in this school. Well, Maine has done a lot of very progressive legislation, and part of it is non-discrimination that instructs schools that transgender students, they get to pick their pronouns. They get to use the appropriate bathroom. It prohibits bullying. It prevents teachers from outing students to their parents. Well, the school board of this particular high school has become somewhat conservative, and they decided they wanted to repeal all of those provisions. Oh. And they had a public, very emotional hearing before their school board. Students went in and said, the only reason I can be here, the only reason I'm still here is because these policies are in place. And late at night, the school board voted to repeal their non-discrimination statute, their non-discrimination policies. Oh. Well, then steps forward Leah Ships, who on my next trip to Maine, I'm going to go find them. They are a manager of a construction site with five days before the election. They did a write-in campaign. Guess who won? They now have a progressive school board, and they have a policy that's back in place. All right. Good going. Out Maine, they just put out a notice that they got a grant from the Equity Fund of the Maine Community Foundation, much like the Samara Fund, Community Fund here, to help them support the work of their Gay Straight Alliance. And this will allow their coordinator to go statewide to continue to advance the work of equity equality and inclusion. The Massachusetts Senate, on a unanimous vote, passed their Parentage Act. And they're you know, doing the, the final drafting. It will then go to the governor, which will bring Maine into step with the rest of New England. Yay. Uh, Massachusetts in step with the rest of New England because it was the only state that didn't have it, which was interesting because the person who was working on this bill from GLAD was Polly Crozier, who was the person who worked both with the state of Maine, Vermont, to pass our versions of the Parenting Act. So good going, Polly. But there's not all good news out of Massachusetts. There has been increased anti-LGBTQ vandalism of their churches. And it's their out churches that are open and affirming. And there were three that were targeted and is currently under investigation. And what all of these churches have said in response is that one of the things that was most distressing about the incident where pride flags were taken down, banners, and just hateful gra graffiti were put on the side of their oh. building, is that all of this, they wrote on it that they were doing it in the name of their Lord. Mm -hmm. so. so I talked fast. And you did well doing it. There you go. Fast. I'm going to do one that's a, a clip, and it's of... Um, Season of the Dragon, oh. an HBO series, is uh. finally official. Rhaenyra Targaryen is queer. Yes. The revelation which came in the final minutes of episode six of House of the Dragons, second season, is not all that shocking, especially for those who have read beyond the surface of the relationship between Rihanna and her childhood companion turned mortal enemy. Um, at least in Hightower. But the confirmation series serves to elevate Rihanna, I can't try to pronounce his name, Rayanara as a character. 
with the scene itself acting as a pivotal turning point for the rightful heir in her season-long struggle with autonomy. So here is the clip. A boy I just had. Yes. Hold on. Where are you going? She wants to see him. Now? I'm coming with you. I should hope so. Let me take him. Oh, she'll get no such satisfaction from me. Just take my arm at the least. Was it terribly painful? Oh, God. I took a lance through the shoulder once. My deepest sympathies. I'm glad I'm not a woman. What is it? What is it? What is it? Fuck. Walk. Walk. What could she possibly want? I thought we were past this. And is this, um, does the clip show the lesbian kiss? I think it does. But... Because that was so distinctive I about know. it. It wasn't in the script. The actors just did it. You know, just did they it. decided that they were <clears throat> face to face and they kissed. Uh, yeah. It, was it, it, only make, it only makes sense. I know. <laughs> Don't you think? And yep. it's sci fi, so of course Linda would find it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> there is a. Uh, a book coming out about Elizabeth Taylor called The Gift and Glamour of an Icon by Kate Anderson Brower. On Friday in 1998, Taylor learned that a friend of her assistant had died alone with no money for his burial from AIDS. Oh. Taylor wanted her business manager to arrange for the man who had died to be buried. She was outraged when she learned that this couldn't be done ASAP. We will not fucking wait until Monday, Taylor said. We will do it right now. Taylor, who lived from 1932 to 2011, was for most of her life not only a celebrity, but a household name, a worldwide subject of admiration, titillation, and gossip. But Taylor was so much more than catnip for the paparazzi. She was a feminist, an often underrated actress, businesswoman, senator's wife, addict, mother, lover of animals, and proponent of gun control, an opponent of anti-Semitism, philanthropist, and queer history hero. Yet despite the hype, glam, and all that's been written about Taylor, many aren't aware of the multi facets of her life. She was one of the people so. responsible for the founding of AMFAR in the early days of the epidemic when everybody else was running away. I know, she was amazing, She's, really. She stepped up. So it'll be good to have this, um, this biography, and a sort of new biography in a different way to look at Elizabeth Taylor, so. Um, and lastly, I'm going to read about um, our friends in the Heritage Foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, Anne, Speak you for probably know, you're Catholic. You probably know what this is. Is it Opus D? Day. Day. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is that? Exactly? I don't know, it's not a Catholic thing. It's a fringe mystical organization. Okay. It was it was part of the central core of the Da Vinci it Code. Exactly. It was the core of the Da Vinci Code. It is a secret organization, a secret cult, which if you were in America, you would refer to it as the deep state, but is embedded within the fringes of the Catholic faith. It is part of the Catholic fringes, but okay. And I wanted to get that clear because I, I really didn't know, and this is part of the story here. We didn't learn about it in Catholic school. I bet you did My didn't. Catholic school, anyway. And it's pronounced day? Dei. Dei. 
I know this from seeing the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> yeah. The Vatican, too, the Vatican does not recognize that. No, I'm sure yeah. they don't. Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts often describes as the architect of Project 2025 has ties to the far right and secretive Roman Catholic group Opus Dei. 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 Roberts acknowledged in a speech last September that for years he has visited the Catholic Information Center on K Street Institution, headed by this organization, a priest, and incorporated by the Archdiocese of Washington on a weekly basis for mass and <coughs> formation of religious guidance. The Guardian reports this organization also organizes monthly retreats at the CIC, and it didn't explain what this was, so I don't know, in his speech, which can be viewed online. Roberts talked about banning contraception, which he said would be the most difficult goal for him and his allies to achieve. <clears throat> but they can win this and other <clears throat> fights with strategy of radical incrementalism passing legislation that gives them some of what they want and can be built upon, he said. The same approach can be used for abortion rights and LGBTQ rights, including marriage equality, Robert said. <clears throat> so there you go. There's your secret organization. Yeah. What does CIC mean? I have no idea. In relation to this? Catholic something or other, I bet. But anyway. Um, so I think that's it for me. And you have about, do you have like a two minute or three minute I have three headlines? pictures and I'm going to summarize. Okay. Uh, first is a picture of Nikki. We're back at the Olympics. This is Nikki Dahl, um, who... Uh, stuns in runway segment at the Paris Olympics opening ceremony. So here she is with uh, Paloma and per Paloma and Peach, uh, best known for uh, competing in RuPaul uh, season 12 and hosting three seasons of Drag France. Nikki Dahl made a historic appearance uh, at the Olympics. First, they went to this um, right next to the runway and stared fiercely at the models strutting in uh, the opening segment, and then they actually walked the runway. So there's a picture of them. Uh, there, a controversy ensued at the Olympics involving a presentation, like a, uh, what's the word, a tableau um, of what some religious groups decried as a mockery of Christianity. The organizers of the games apologized, said there was no intention to show any disrespect to any group. Let's take a look at this picture. Um, French bishops were angry. The pope was mad. Um, it focused on a scene involving dancers, drag queens, and a DJ in poses that, re <coughs> that recalled depictions of the Last Supper. Um, Clearly, there was never an intention to show disrespect. Um, they meant it to promote tolerance of different sexual and gender identities. Uh, um, and <clears throat> they wanted to do a big pagan party to the gods of Olympus. So these religious people got mad, uh, and they apologized. And my last picture is of a gay boxer, Cindy Naremka. She clinches her historic first medal for the refugee Olympic team. Um, Olympic athletes have been competing under the banner of the refugee Olympic team since the Rio Games of 2016, and Nambia's uh, accomplishment marks the first time one of them will finish on the podium. She was born in Cameroon, and her parents fled her native country during a period of civil war in 2009 and resettled in Bolton, England. She identifies as gay, and though the UK has not granted um, her citizenship, uh, they gave her asylum. Uh, one of the first most inspiring people I've ever met, the boxing coach said, in spite of all the obstacles and naysayers, 
Nambia is now part of sports history for both the Refugee Olympic team and Team LGBTQ. Thank you, Ian. Very quick, the comment about the tableau to our friends from the Catholic faith, it's not always about you. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and the answer to CIC is it's the Catholic integrated community in a world estranged from the church to make the gospel present in such a way that those whose path has led them away from church can again find new access to the faith of the Catholic church. Oh, That's yeah. who they are. So All the right, trivia. Thank you. thank you. The trivia, because we're coming back to some queer stuff. Good. Yeah. Big queer stuff. The place in which I'll fit won't exist until I make it. This might be the 100th anniversary of the August 2nd, 1924 birth in Harlem of James Baldwin. All right. So. Yes. <coughs> Thank you so much. And on that note, oh. we're going to say resist even harder. We have to elect them. Resist. <laughs>